My first guest tonight is the host of the number one cable news show in America for 15 years running. Please welcome Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> How are you? I'm the same. You're the same? Yeah, which is pretty good. You never change? You never change? Not too much. I'm pretty uh, consistent in my uh, presentation. How's, how's everything over at Fox News? I have not watched it much in the yeah. last year. You're not I still, allowed, though. <laughs> I still watch. Allowed. I watch Martha McCallum because she's right. a friend of mine. Uh -huh. um, uh, had Megyn Kelly on last night, had a lovely time with her. Good. But everybody's good over at Fox? You guys still number yeah, one? Yeah, I think so. We're still number one by a lot. Okay, um, you're 15 years number one. Yeah. Number one. How does that feel to be like king of the world for 15 years? Well, I started at age 26 and, uh, mm -hmm. I'm 41 now. Really? Um, <laughs> you know, we work hard. I mean, that's what it is. Everybody says, well, is there a magic formula? And it isn't. Everybody uh, works hard, though. No, I mean, no, no, yeah. No, everybody's oh, no, working no, no, no. hard. No. No. Those guys at CNN and MSNBC aren't seeing their kids no. at night. Uh, yeah. First of all, they're all on crack over there. Really? Yeah. Oh. Both you of guys, them? You guys didn't know that? Both of them? You didn't know that? Wow. And, no, but I've got to tell you, there are a lot of uh, anchor people who, huh? who they don't write their own stuff. They're in makeup for five hours. So you write your like own stuff? You. you write stuff? Um, five, I yeah. wish. <laughs> no, Bill, it takes five wow. hours just to get the latex appliances Is on. that right? Oh, absolutely. So you, do, you write all your I own stuff? I write everything. And, wow, uh, and, and so... Do you, so blame do you have me? You have no writers on your staff? None. Me either. Right. At the end of the day, <laughs> I improvise. At the end of the day, they just write down what yeah. I said. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. It's just magic how you can do it all. Thank you very right. much. It Thank is. you very much. You're welcome. Okay, let me ask you about that debate the other night. Yes. You're, you're the man who understands politics. I mm -hmm. only pretended to understand politics for many years. That thing that happened with Rubio on Saturday night. There are people seriously saying that's it for his campaign. No. That he showed himself to be a neophyte, and if mm -hmm. somebody can get rattled, you know, and go home to their talking points that hard, that they can't do the job of the commander in chief. They can't handle the pressure. Well, all they would say in the first debate uh, with Walter Wandale, Ronald Reagan got clocked. He got murdered. Really? And uh, then they brought in my boss, Roger Ailes. He was a political consultant at the time, and he turned it right around for Reagan. So that everybody uh, can have a bad debate to form performance. You just don't know. It, it, this, this race in tomorrow in New Hampshire, I think Trump will win. He's so far out ahead. I think he will win. I think Sanders will win on the Democrat side. Um, there's only two Democrats, so Hillary has to come in second. Um, but on the Republican side, after Trump, you just don't know. It's just a swirl. There's only 17 people in New Hampshire. I don't know whether you know that or not. And it's the same people. And, and you know, they're, they're getting donuts, they're getting coffee, and whoever, you know, has got the best swag, they could win. Why do you think, why do you think Trump is doing so well, especially like an independent-minded New Hampshire? You, you know the guy. What, what is, what's his secret to appealing to the audience? Well, Trump hit history at the right time because people are angry. Trump and Sanders are really the same guy. They just changed their facial expressions. I've never seen them, right. I've never seen them in the same room at the same time. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Trump and Sanders are the same guy because they're both tapping into anger, the anger of the voter who feels they're getting hosed. On the right, they don't like the fact that there's an open border, they can't solve that problem, that ICE is beheading Americans, nothing really happens to ISIS. It's anger, anger, anger. On the left, they feel that the economy is run by the billionaires. And I am going to solve that. It's rigged. So the left. I'm sorry, did you just have a stroke just no. now? What's happening? I don't know sure who you were doing. That was Bernie? That was Bernie. Oh, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Just pay attention. I want to make sure we had uh, yeah. EMs, EMT standing it's by. It's the billionaires that are doing it. You mean it. the 1% are controlling the 90% of the economy for everyone else? You had the same stroke. <laughs> These strokes are contagious. But haven't it's people like always haven't people yeah. always appealed with anger? I mean, no. you get anger and you no. get angry Does on Jeb, your show. Did, yeah, but I'm different. Did Jeb Bush? No, look you're angry? different. Does so Jeb you're... Bush look angry? He's not angry. No, he looks he, like he looks bewildered. All right. <laughs> Why? So he's why not, is Jeb? Why is Jeb not, not doing an well? Angry guy. Do you think he doesn't want to run? He looks like the kind of guy who thought he was going to a wedding and then he wanders into a bar mitzvah and goes, "I don't know what language." <laughs> do I put the little thing on my head? Look. Is this a is this a snack or a hat? I don't know what to do. Is it a, is it a taco? You've lost control. Colbert's lost control. Let's no, go no, back to the original control. 
So that this time in history, people want an avenger. They don't want a politician. They want somebody to come in and blow the whole system Do you think that's good? Do you think that's good? Because an avenger is not somebody who can necessarily govern or lead. He's somebody who can stir a crowd. But how do you go in there and change things? That's actually a good question from Colbert. Do I think that's good? Um, it's, it's, good and it's, it's good and it's bad. The, the good part about it is it gets people engaged in the political process uh -huh. so that Trump himself has performed a miracle by making Americans actually pay attention to what's happening. So that's good. What's bad is both Trump and Sanders say stuff that's impossible. That could never happen. And their followers, I guess, don't really care. So Trump says, for example, well, I'm going to deport 12 million illegal aliens. Mm -hmm. Well, I said to him on my show, yeah. you can't because of due process. Once you're in the United States, whether you're legal or illegal, mm -hmm. you have all the rights under the Constitution. That would mean you'd have 12 million separate hearings in front of judges, which would take us up to about the year 2080. Bill, right? not if you use Judge Judy. She could whip through those people. Okay. I say... Make some coin, too. Broadcast the whole thing. She Put can an do it. Put on it. Yeah. Judge Judy. Yep. Uh, on the other side, you have Sanders going, everybody's going to get a free public college education. But they do it all over the world. It doesn't matter. There are only 16 people in Denmark. It's 325 million people here. Uh -huh. It's $19 trillion in debt. I know you don't care, but there's a big debt, and Bernie would double it. And you can't do that. So it's never going to happen. So that's the good and the bad. Well, uh, that's a good place to pause. We've got to take a commercial break. Can you stick around for one more right. segment, sure. please? We'll be right back with the good and the bad and the Bill O'Reilly.